And so a plus lens, um, I kind of think of it like this, where you're putting basically two triangles um, bottom to bottom. And I, I like to think of it that way because then if we, I know that if I'm moving 10 millimeters down from the center, then I'm gonna have base up prism if I'm talking about the right lens. Um, if I'm talking about the left lens, I'm gonna be adding base down prism. Based on Prentice's rule, patient is reading one centimeter below the optic center. And so we're getting 1.75 prism diopters from the right eye, getting minus 2.25 from the left. Total prismatic effect is four prism diopters base up from the right eye or right hyper. Any questions on that one? I think that was one that I sent out. So I hope you had a chance to look at that already. Any questions? Again? I guess I had a question and maybe it's intuitive, but we have a base up prism in the right eye and a base down prism in the left eye. And so why are we adding the prism as opposed to subtracting the prism? Good question. So if you have opposite prisms in the two eyes, I guess if, if we had, um, can you guys see my cursor moving around at all on here? Yeah. Okay. So if this, if this eye was a plus 2.25, then we're getting the same direction of prism in both eyes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, it, there's the, the difference between the two at that point would only be a half diopter, which isn't going to induce very much prism. Um, because they're opposite signs, this left eye is bending the light up. This right eye is bending the light down. And so it's almost like you're, you're getting double the difference because each eye is doing a different thing. Um, um, so it's the dip, it's, it's the induced amount of prism. It's not the total amount of prism. The induced amount of prism, exactly. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and so that's, that's one reason that, you know, somebody who the, pris, the, the prescriptions are pretty similar to each other, you wouldn't expect there to be induced prism, but the more anisometropia they have, or especially if they have like a plus, in the vertical on one eye and a minus in the other eye, you really have to pay attention to induced prism. Yeah. Um, now, frankly, I, in my mind, I just think, okay, if there's a difference greater than about three diopters between the two eyes, this is something that I'll probably have to pay attention to. Um, less than that, most patients don't complain about it. Um, but definitely, like if they are complaining and, and you look at the prescription and they, or anisometropic, that could be a reason. So, yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that does. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. And I included the ad. So, what do you do with that? Good question. So, the ad basically cancels cancels each other out. Um, so you can get into some some differences if you if you're talking about. I just don't, I don't know if I want to go there, but basically if you, um, if you include the ad, that would then make this left eye a plus a quarter, and then you'd add 2.5 plus 1.75 to this, and it would, the, the difference between the two eyes would still end up being the same. So if the ad power is the same in both eyes, just ignore it, basically, because it, it cancels each other out when it comes to parentheses rule in prison. Um, sorry, I just had a quick question as well. Uh, I'm Jordan, I'm the intern. Um, yeah. so, so if you're, um, I, I think where I got tripped up on this is that if the astigmatic axis, the steep axis is at 180, um, I think I like ignored the sill because if they're looking like in the vertical meridian down, isn't that the flat axis for um, the astigmatism. So I just took the like sphere at like face value for each prism. Got it. So 
Yeah, that's why a power cross like this is something that's really helpful. I think, I know in one of the video segments, they talked about the power cross, but I can't remember which part that was, but um, so a power cross basically just means um, you, and you may have drawn one of these out, but so for a power cross, so you, you take the first number and put it at whatever axis is in the second number. So in this case, we put the plus one at 180, mm -hmm. you add the two together, and put it 90 degrees away from there. And so you take a plot, you put this plus one on the horizontal, add the astigmatism, so plus 1.75 on the vertical. Um, when it comes to Prentice's rule, we're really only paying attention to the vertical, especially if it says it's looking at 10 millimeters below. Almost every problem that I've seen is if it's somebody looking down in the glasses. And so you really, you, you do want to put it on a power cross and maybe just draw really quick these triangles um, just to help you visualize is the image getting pushed down? Do we have base up prism or base down prism? But yeah, I always put both powers on there just so I don't get tripped up by that. Um, okay, sounds and, and, good. Yeah, and if you, you know, if you're thinking retinoscopy and I do have some retinoscopy problems in this presentation, um, you know, then you're talking about, okay, the beam's going across like this, and yes, I'm measuring the horizontal meridian, or now I flip my beam up, my beam like this, and I'm moving it up and down, and I'm measuring the vertical meridian. I wouldn't think of it like that in these problems. I would just, if you see the, the prescription, the glasses prescription, I would just put it on a power cross really quick. Um, if the add powers are the same, I would just ignore the add. And then draw that power cross for both eyes, draw your little triangles, and within, within a pretty quick amount of time, you should be able to take the difference between the two and, and come up with an answer. Perfect. But yeah, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do a few more of these problems as well, these Prentice rule, because they're, they're high yield on the test, so I hear. If you, in, if you include the add, then in the right eye, in the vertical meridian, you're still Face up, but then doesn't it flip the prism in the left eye because you turn into plus a quarter in the vertical meridian? Is that true or no? It would. It would flip that prism, but you're still basically taking the difference between the two. So even though that is now technically base up, it's, it's much less base up than the right eye. That right eye is much higher. So even though, so So you have like basically plus 4.25 in the right eye, and then you have plus a quarter in the left. 4.25 minus 0.25 still comes out to be four diopters. And then you're one centimeter below. So even though, yes, even though now that left eye would technically be base up, you have much less base up in the left eye than you do in the right, and the difference still ends up being four diopters. Does that make sense? Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, we'll do it. We'll do it. What's that? I was just gonna say, like, um, like the, the the bifocal ad has to cancel out, right? Because it doesn't even specify if they're bifocals or progressives. So, like, you don't even know, like, at what ramp that it's increasing power. So you can't actually calculate the true prism from the bifocal or progressive ad, right? So it has to cancel out. Because you're not given that information. Correct. You'd have to know if it's the seg the seg height. Um, different things like that. But once again, if the, if the bifocal power is the same, really you're just dealing with the, the, the vertical power of the, the distance prescription. You can just kind of ignore that. So um, yeah, unless the seg heights were different, if the add powers were at different levels, then you might have to take that into account. That's getting pretty complex for like a problem that's only a minute long. So. Um, yeah, we'll get some more practice with these things because I think they're high yield. They're they're really helpful. So, okay, let me try to switch back to the Kahoot. We'll go on to the second one. Nice, JCC in the lead here. I'm not even sure why it keeps points, but there'll be some brownie points at the end, I guess. So, okay, so question number two. Can you guys see this? Yep. 
Ah, that was quick. Nice. Very, very good. So. Okay, can you guys see the actual presentation view now? Yeah. Okay. All right, so very good job on this one. So this is talking about a telescope, plus 20 lens, minus 40 objective. Um, one of those equations on that equation list that, I, or that should have been sent out by Elaine uh, is this mag question. So, if you have a plus eyepiece lens and a minus objective lens, just in your head, if you have opposite signs, that's a Galilean telescope. Um, and this one's a little different because basically they're holding it backwards. Um, anyway, based on the equation, we have 20 over 40, which is a half 0.5 X. Um, and so, the difference between their focal lengths ends up being 2.5 centimeters. So very good job. I think there's only one. I can't even see who didn't get that right, which is. Uh, oh, that was that was me. Sorry, I flipped my uh, my uh, eyepiece and objective uh, in the. New yeah. Here. My bad. No, you're good. <laughs> Okay, we'll do some more of these, uh, these telescope questions as well. And, and sometimes drawing these out can be helpful too, but um, as long as you can keep the eyepiece and objective um, in your head as far as that equation, should be pretty good. So, okay, any other questions on this one? Okay, let me go back to the Kahoot. Solid. Nice. I expect you guys to rack up some points on these pre-work ones. So. Okay, question number three. Everybody pulling through on this one. I think a lot of you, based on how quickly those were answered, I think a lot of you did that one earlier. Um, let's go to the presentation. Oh. There was one more slide on the telescopes from before. This is just to show um, where the focal point is in between the two lenses in the telescope. So if it's an astronomical, the focal point is inside. So those are gonna be longer. If it's a Galilean, the focal point is the eyepiece behind the ocular. So those will be shorter telescopes. Okay, here's question number three. Um, so it is E at the plane of the minus three lens. I think just drawing these ones out is the best way to do this, to picture it in your mind and make sure that you're keeping your equation straight. Everybody got that one right. Any questions on question number three? Take that as a no. Um, here's the equation that's used, V equals U plus D. I think Jennifer, you and I, you learned this as V equals U plus P, but um, okay. Very good job, guys. Okay, so we're going to question number four.
Keplerian keynotes. I am loving these names, you guys. Okay, here's question four. Is it just me or can I not select the right answer? Well, some of these, so there's A, B or C, D and E. Um, some of these, the, oh, Kahoot, I see, I see. Kahoot would only give me four options that I could put in there. So yes, I had to uh, do some finagling. So, if there's ever a question with five answers, one of the answer choices on Kahoot will have two options in there. I didn't know how else to do it. So um, awesome. You guys all got that right. And once again, I, so when you guys were figuring out question number four, did you guys figure out the answer based on equations or did you just draw it and look at the image that was formed? I'm just curious how you guys came to that answer. I was told that all minus lenses created upright virtual images, and it's clearly smaller because it's closer than the object. Nice. Did it, did anybody draw the the chart in uh, in question number three, and then just use that to see the 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 image look like? I was calculating the mag, but I couldn't figure out where to get the sign that shows that it's upright. Got it, let me see. So let me share back to the presentation mode. Okay. So, so here's the drawing. Um, and, and so, like I said, for me, whenever I do these problems, I draw it out just to keep my signs correct. Um, but also on OCAPs, you don't have an unlimited amount of time. So if it's something that you would, you, you look at it, you think you can figure it out pretty quick without drawing it, no worries. But, um, so if you actually kind of drew out these lines, it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you drew them out and you'd see that the image is minified, it's shorter, the image formed is upright and virtual because it's behind the lens. So the magnification, you use this, this, uh, um, this equation down here. So I'm sorry, you were asking about the sign, is that right? Yeah, so I used, instead of the distances in my magnification, I was using the vergences and uh, kept winding up with a negative. A negative value on that? On mag, so like. Um, so I was using m equals negative u over v and had negative values for u and v. So uh, it was coming out to a negative magnification. Got it. Um, I have to let me just look at the equation sheet again. Sorry, I'm flying through these back here. So are you, this this equation here, but the the negative u over v. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that equation is not supposed to have a negative in front of it. I don't know. I will have to look. I the the equation that I normally use is that one that I put in in, the, in that equation list. I mean, I do remember that negative u over v, but I will have to look back in time at the, at my notes. Um, 
Yeah, no worries. Scratch draw some cobwebs on that one. So I will put a star next to that. Okay. But um, yeah, based on, like I said, for me, like if you've drawn the image already from the question before, then you can just draw, you can kind of tell what the image looks like. And that's an easy way without even having to do any equations. Um, the things that you guys talked about already though, generally work pretty well just to have in your mind as far as um, upright virtual from a minus lens. So, okay, so you guys are doing. Is there is there a situation we'd encounter where a minus lens created either a real or inverted image? Or can we just know that as a rule for our test? Good question. So yes, a minus lens will create that, but it all depends on um, what they're asking the question in relation to. So, you know, because in this, there's two, a two lens system. There could be multiple lenses. Um, if they were saying, you know, in relation to the, uh, no, I think, I think if it's a minus lens, it pretty much always would be um, a, a virtual upright image. But you just have to be pay attention to what they're saying in relation to. Because um, sometimes they might say something, I, I just remember like, and maybe they were just complex questions back in the day, but they might say something like, you know, if from the perspective of the object, what, what does this image, you know, look like? And they might just say like, it's, it's smaller and upright, but it'd still be virtual. So I, I think that, I think you can pretty much keep that in your mind that it would be upright and virtual um, from a minus lens. I think something to keep in mind is just thinking about the incoming vergence <clears throat> to the lens. So if you have a lens system where the incoming vergence to the minus lens is like a plus five, and then that lens is a plus two, then the outgoing vergence is still gonna be a plus. And so it's gonna be a, um, you know, then that rule wouldn't hold. So I think that's important to keep in mind. Gosh, I think that, that, that does make sense. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, yeah, once again, we're drawing it out might be helpful, but uh, yeah. If it's a single lens system, then it would always be the case if the light's coming from the left. But the, the incoming versions definitely matters. Okay, more practice problems. Um, so just some things to keep in mind, I believe this is still the case where you have 480 minutes for 460 questions. That's a little over a minute per question. Some questions you'll fly through, some of these optics ones just take more time. But if you find that you're getting stuck on something, just you know, come back to it. But uh, no calculators, so try not to use them today. Hope you already have some scratch paper and pencil ready. So this is the next question. Let me put it on the food so you guys can submit your answer here. JCC, Prism's on a roll here. This is, this is good stuff. Okay. All right. So looks like a couple of you got fooled by the working distance. So let me see if I can tell the direction. All right. 
Who is JCC? That's me. Um, nice. Optics mess. Um, Jennifer, can you explain why the answer is C and not, uh, I think the other one, excuse me, why the answer is D sure. and not B. Um, so you have to take into account your working distance when you're doing retinoscopy. Um, you as the observer are only 50 centimeters away. You're not at infinity. So you have to take um, one divided by 0.5 to get two diopters of, um, you know, kind of induced virgins because you're an observer closer. Um, so whatever answer you get, like the plus 22, you just have to take two away from it. So you end up with a 20 and a 25 instead of a 22 and 27. Nice. So can you guys see the presentation now? Are you guys still seeing the Kahoot or are you seeing the presentation now? We're seeing the presentation. presentation. Okay. So this is exactly what Jennifer is saying. So um, uh, when you are doing retinoscopy, working distance matters a lot. And so it should tell you a working distance and you have to account for that urgency. Um, so like you said, one over half, one over 0.5 is a minus two. And so if you put your, um, your retinoscopy powers on a power cross, take that version into account, you will end up with a um, plus 20 and plus 25. Very good job. Um, but if you forget this version, it can definitely throw you off. If you forget that working distance. Any, but I am in, I am very impressed. You, I, you all got the powers on the right lines, um, which with retinoscopy can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Any questions on on this problem? Going once, twice. Uh, okay. Great job on that one. Um, let's go back to the Kahoot. Everybody rocking it on that one. Um, spherical equivalent is something that thankfully is pretty simple. I, I don't know how high yield it is, but it's good to have, have that skill down clinically and potentially on the test as well. Um, you guys all got that one right. Basically, here is the equation. It's a sphere plus half of a sill. And I guess the only thing that I would pay attention to, pay close attention to, excuse me, is if it's plus sill or minus sill, because that would determine if you're either adding or subtracting from the sphere power. But you guys all did really well on that. So, oh, there's a sneak peek at the next question. Any questions on spherical equivalent? That's that's pretty simple stuff. Any questions there? Okay. All right, next question. Okay, so majority rocking it on that one. So optically empty just just made a push there. Who is optically empty? It's me. Allie, is that right? Yeah. Awesome. So Allie, can you explain how you got that answer and how you got it so quickly on that one? 
Um, with prisms, they work off like 100 centimeters being how much they're going to displace. So with this question, they, um, I think it was like 30 or 33. So I knew at 100 centimeters, it'd be six. So then at 30, it'd be about two. Yeah. We'll go back to the presentation here. Exactly, so we're at 33 centimeters, which is about a third of a meter, right? So if it's a six prism doctor, you take a third of that, which would be about two centimeters. Great job. So you can draw this one out as well. Um, with optics, drawings are usually hem helpful. They just take a minute to draw. But yeah, if you have that 100 centimeter number in your head, then you can just figure out how, what length um, or how far from the prism they're talking about. Do a quick ratio and apply that to the prism. Um, I think there's one person that didn't get this one right. Are, are there any questions? on prism. I just clicked the wrong one, sorry. <laughs> oh, well, there we go, all right. Um, okay, and another thing to keep in mind with prisms, um, maybe applicable later, we'll see. Um, for angles under 45 degrees, each degree equals approximately two prism diopters or two prism diopters per degree for angles under 45 degrees. But the big one I think they're going to be testing on is, you know, is defined as deviation of one centimeter at one meter distance. Okay. Okay, on to the next. Love it when everybody gets it right here. Okay, so this basically explains far point and near point. So for an uncorrected myope, far point of 40 centimeters, um, the power is just one over negative 0.4 meters, or negative 40 centimeters comes out to minus two and a half. Great job. The next question is also related to this, this minus two and a half. So don't forget that number yet, but um, any questions on how to determine the refractive error for a myope or a hyperope? Any questions on that? Okay. Let's do the next question. Like I said, it's related to question number three here. Okay. So one for num or for answer D, and then five for minus one and a half. Let's see. 
All right. Four eyes is making a move. Who's four eyes? I am. <laughs> yes. God, I um, work so hard. <laughs> so Ariana, can you um, can you tell us how you got that answer? Yeah, the patient's regular far point um, told us that they have normally minus two. Uh, what? Well, minus two point five. Um, power in their eyes and then to get to this closer point they would need uh minus four and that's calculated from the 25 centimeters so the difference in power uh is what they have to accommodate correct so how do you know if you're supposed to like add them together or take the difference there um well you know that he's a myo and so he has this uh, near point, like he's nearsighted, and that this is now a closer near point that he has to get to. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So once again, if you ever can't keep that in your mind, you could draw something out really quick. But yeah, it's basically just taking that difference, and you end up with one and a half diopters of accommodation. Yeah. And, and putting it into diopter form, it's much, much easier if you put it into powers and diopters to do a problem like this when you're accounting for equation. Um, excuse me, accounting for accommodation. Not equation. Um, so yeah, uh, and there, do they do questions on OCAPs that are kind of sequential? Are there? I don't think so. Not necessarily? Okay. So they could easily come. As as Say had, that again. I feel like sometimes they had a two-part question. I think there'd be maybe like two questions that are tied together. Got it. I, so they could put something where these are either separate or together easily. Um, I, would, I mean, I just split it up just so you can do that. But um, yeah, anyway, putting it into the, the power and diopters is very helpful for some of this. Any, any questions on accounting for this accommodation right here. Okay. Next question, true or false? So glad you all got that right. Um, okay, so these next questions are tied together, even if they don't have this type of question on OCAP where there's multiple questions in a row tied together. Um, I think that it's actually very, very valuable practice to do this. So, so this is question number five. Um, and you guys see it on the presentation there. Back in presentation. Does anybody need more time on question five? It's harder without being able to tell when you guys are done. Okay, I'm gonna move on to question number six. Here's question number six.
Okay, five more seconds for this one. Okay, question number seven. Anybody need more time for question seven? Okay, here's question eight. Is 1.5 the distance between the two lenses? Yes, it is. Great question. Yes, it is. Hey, anybody know that need more time on this one? Okay, yeah, let's go question nine, the last one in the series. This is where it'd be great to be in person so I can see if you guys are done or not. Lovely COVID. All right, five more seconds. Okay. So let's see. I'm gonna come back to Cole. Are you on here? Yeah, he's yeah, here. But I'm gonna talk through Ariana's. Okay, perfect. Can you tell me what you got for question number five? Okay, so I got B because so U is minus one plus D is plus five. So then B equals plus four. One over four is 0.25. Uh, and that's positive, so it's 25 centimeters to the right of the lens. Oh, yeah. There's <laughs> my wonderful brother. 
That's one of my favorite pictures, if you mind just having to put that on. Don't show them that in the recording. Um, okay, so yes, question number five, B, 25 centimeters to the right of the lens. Awesome, and you just use that B equals U plus D equation for that. Big thing here is just make sure you're keeping your sign straight. If the object is to the left of the lens, which is the standard, then that's gonna be minus one. Um, added to a plus five gives you that plus four. Plus is gonna be to the right of the lens. So 25 centimeters to the right. Excellent job. All right, any questions on this problem? Did anybody mess up the numbers or anybody um, have any questions on this? If you have any questions, feel free to ask Cole. He's, he's got this one down. Um, all right. Let's, uh, Tyler, are you available? Yeah. Okay, so for question six, can you tell us what you what your answer was and how you got that answer? Uh, so I think the answer was D, sorry, B. Um, it is real because the, it's a converging lens. So light actually passes through that point. It is, if you draw the central ray from the tip of the object through the center of the five diopter thin lens and beyond, the image will be inverted. And then by process of elimination, I got reduced. But if you do the magnification equation, which states the image distance divided by the object distance, it should also be smaller. Awesome. So let me just go to the next slide here. Yeah, so I just did a quick drawing as well. And you can also, by that, see that it's inverted real to the right of the lens and reduced. It is smaller. Um, but absolutely, just keeping those things kind of in your mind, OK, it's a converging lens. Um, and then you can do the magnification equation. Um, Jennifer, do you usually draw the rays or do you just do the equation and kind of know what to expect? I'm just curious. Um, I like to think about the distances. So for you know this example, I forget how much it was, maybe 35 centimeters, but I'll do like po positive 35 over negative 100. So then I know it's minified because it's less than one and it's minus. So it'll be inverted in real. Got it. That's great. I asked Jennifer because she's, you know, fresh out of optics, um, boards and all that fun stuff. So yeah, there's a couple ways to kind of keep it in your mind. That's a great one. Um, just using the distances. So, okay, any questions on question six? All right. Lydia, are you on here? I am on, yes. All right. Um, can you, so I'm going to pull up question number seven here. Can you tell us what you got for question seven? Um, yes. So for question number seven, um, I said that the uh, size of, one second, um, the size of the intermediate object so it is smaller. Um, I initially thought that it was one half of the size, but based on the drawing and the previous question, I believe that the answer should be a, a fourth of the size. It is one fourth of the size. So, yeah. So E equals U plus D is a good way to kind of determine how or what the size is. Um, so once again, like if, if you draw it, if you just, if, if there were these series of, what is that, four or five questions together and you did a drawing initially and just drew where the image was, then a lot of these questions could be answered just by looking at that image. But it does take a little bit of time. So just as long as you're able to keep that kind of image in your mind. Um, 
then you, you could just answer with that. You can also just use the distances like what Jennifer was saying, um, the distance of 25 centimeters versus one meter. Um, that's one fourth the distance. So we expect one fourth the size. Um, yep. Yes, or you can just use the V plus U plus D equation. I think the picture is very helpful, the drawing. Yeah, pretty helpful. And um, so it goes over in the video how to do these drawings. And also, so that grand rounds on Wednesday, I had not seen any of those resources on the Academy website. I, I want to try to incorporate some of those into my pre-work for next time. Um, it sounds like some of you PGY2s have been able to utilize that resource, but um, when I was browsing through, it looked like it had some, some pretty good information on telescopes. And, and I think one of them was on ray tracing. Um, but basically, um, you, if you have your, your tip of your object and you draw a line straight through there, if it's a converging lens, you always, you always draw it straight through where the, the center of the lens meets the horizon. And just you can continue, continue that one on for infinity. Um, if it's a converging lens, you would, yeah, I guess you do kind of need to know the distance away from the lens that will be converging and just draw it. Anyway, it goes over on there. Um, I don't want to take too much time doing that, but if you, if you learn how to ray trace quickly, it can be super helpful for questions like that. Um, any questions on this one? Okay, for question number eight. Ariana, could you walk us through question number eight? Yes. Okay. Question number eight. Uh, we were calculating the um, the new U for the new image subvergence and for objects, um, I first place the object 25 centimeters to the right of the plus five lens, which puts it at uh, 1.25 uh, meters to the left of the minus two lens. And then uh, my new, that's my new object. So my new object divergence is the uh, negative of the inverse of 1.25. I um, made that a fraction, which is like negative four fifths. And then I added in the, our lens, which is minus two. So now it's minus two added to minus four fifths. Um, that's negative uh, 14 fifths. And then our new distance is the inverse of that, which is 5 fourteenths. That's about a third. And it's negative, so it's to the left of our new lens. So about a third of a meter to the left, which is D. Yeah. Very good. So I mean, you basically just walked us through exactly what I have on here. Um, you have to make sure that your object starting out is in the correct position, 25 centimeters to the right of the first lens. You take that difference. And then it's just a matter of keeping your sign straight in the V equals U plus D equation. Um, and exactly, and sometimes you can get caught up on exact numbers. So things like fractions or rounding can be very helpful. Um, our, you know, you're exactly right. It ends up being about a third, so close to 33 centimeters to the left. And that, while there's not an exact 33 centimeters to the left option, there's a 36, which is pretty darn close. And so that's what you would go to, yeah. So that series of questions, I guess we have one more. Um, yeah, let's do question nine and then we'll, we'll talk about how helpful these things are. But any questions on question number eight for now before we move on? Okay, let's go. Let's see, Tyler, are you on here? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, can you walk us through what you got for number nine? Um, 
So if you did, yeah. I mean, and if you don't know, that's totally fine too. No, I think I uh, I'm a so given that it's a negative two diopter lens, my assumption is that it's going to be a virtual image which gives c or d and virtual images tend to be in for well i said d i don't remember how i got to d but i said d hey well thankfully you were right um once again just coming from just like a, a just a sheer ray tracing if we started out with our initial, our first image ends up being right here, okay? And so if you had drawn this out or just you know, sketched it in your mind, and then you drew your primary ray through the center of that second lens, and then you knew that the new image was to the left, you could tell just by this image, if you just put about where, where it was on here on the drawing, it's gonna be reduced, it's gonna be virtual, and it's gonna be inverted. So sometimes even just drawing like one single ray can be pretty helpful if you know where the object and image are, are ending up. Um, but yes, this is a case where since it is a minus lens that it is inverted and virtual. But yeah, I, I find for me personally, drawing it out is very helpful. Great job. Okay. So I think if you were able to do those questions, um, that is awesome. <laughs> I mean, if you got all this right, uh, I think that's gonna cover a lot of material as far as images. I mean, a, a lot of high yield stuff um, and, and especially using that V equals U plus D equation. That's what most of this is, is just keeping your sign straight. I don't know that they'd ever do anything this complex um, in a row, but okay. So that's questions five through nine. Any questions on any of those before we move back to Kahoot? Just checking the chat there. I had a quick question. I think I remember at somewhere along the lines, somebody saying that a hyperopic, uh, well, uh, negative lens, so like a negative two diopter lens will only produce virtual images, but a plus diopter lens can produce virtual or real images depending on where the object is. is that so that was one thing that Jennifer was talking about earlier. Yeah. For both a plus or a minus lens, the virgins coming in matters um, as far as the type of object that will be produced. Okay. And so if, you know, if this image was inside the, the primary focal point of the lens, that will determine if it's a real or virtual image that is produced and if it's to the right and the left. Um, I, cannot imagine that they would do something like that on OCAP um, because it would take, like those problems on tests that we did in optics would take five to 10 minutes each to calculate sometimes, putting up, putting, like having to draw it all out. Um, but I don't know, those of you who have taken OCAP, have you run into a scenario like that? Not that it's all about the test, but I'm just curious. Has there been a scenario where, um, where they had put an image inside the primary focal point. So you were, were dealing with a, something different, I guess. I feel like in my memory, they could, the optics could be anything. Like there could be a straightforward question, but there are also questions where you really, you have to do some work on it. So yeah, it didn't surprise me. So even if it, was inside the primary focal length. If you keep the V equals U plus D equations straight, you should be able to determine how far to the right or to the left the image is produced. 
And if it's to the right of that lens, it would be a real image. If it's to the left, it would be a virtual. And really that's what it all comes down to is um, where is that image being produced to the right or to the left of the lens? Um, so I think if you, you know, if you had to draw it out, that's where it gets complicated if it's inside that primary focal point. But if you just keep your equations straight, then you should be able to determine if that image is to the right or to the left of the lens. Does that make sense? Hopefully that does. Like that V equals U plus D with these lens equations. I mean, if you only knew that equation, you could come up with the answers for almost anything. Okay, let's, uh, let's keep cruising. We're gonna go back to Kahoot. Can you guys see the Kahoot screen now? Yes. Okay. All right. All right, so here's the next one. Double points. I don't know why I put double points, but hey. Okay. All right, about 10 seconds. Ah, oh, nice. This is why it was double points here. So this one was ob obviously a tough one. Um, kind of threw a curveball there. Let's see, who got it right? Optically empty. Nice. Allie, solid work. Hey, Allie, was that a guess? Or yes. <laughs> nice. All right. Um, does anybody know what equation we would use here? Pull. I know. So I, I think you still do U plus D equals B, but you have to first calculate the power of the mirror, which is uh, two over R, and I think the right. radius is two, so the power of the mirror is one diopter. And so I think the object distance was 33 centimeters, so minus three plus one is minus two, so your object distance is then 50 centimeters, so your image just, or I'm sorry, sorry, your image distance is 50, so it's 33 divided by or 50 divided by 33, right? Okay, let me share my screen here. Okay, so exactly right. So power of the mirror is two over R, two over the radius. But you're right, we do have to calculate. 
So we have to calculate that power first. Um, two over two is one. Our object is placed 33 centimeters to the left. It'll be a minus three diopters. And then the, so did any, was everybody able to get this minus two diopters for the image? Did anybody get to that point? Or, or did the radius just throw everybody off? I kind of got my signs mixed up. That's where, where I got okay. lost, but yeah. I think it got makes it. sense to think of a the mirror as a lens, which is, which in my mind, when I think of it as a lens, then I think of the U plus the virgins formula. But if I didn't think of that, then I probably wouldn't have gotten to the virgins formula. I don't, I didn't fully, I, I still don't really understand how you know it's like a plus versus the minus 1.5 X. That's what I, that's what I'm still kind of stuck on. Got it. So it it all comes back to this V equals U plus V equation. And this is once again where drawing it out can be helpful just to keep objects and images um, straight. So you're exactly right starting out. So you have to figure out the power of the mirror. Once you get that power of the mirror, that ends up being a plus one. Then you can plug in that V equals U plus D equation. Um, v equals, so U, our object distance is minus 33 centimeters because it's to the left of that original lens. So that would give, mean that U is a minus three. B, we take minus three plus the one from the lens, we get minus two. So both our V and our U are negative. Our transverse magnification equation is transverse mag equals u over v. And so you would plug the minus three over the minus two to get a plus 1.5x. So in this case, it's all just based on that v equals u plus d equation. So if the signs get mixed up, it'd be super easy to get thrown off on if it's a plus or a minus. But since u is a negative, it's a negative three, and V is a negative and negative two from our equation. The negatives cancel each other out. You end up with a plus 1.5X. Does that make any sense? The, the signs make sense in that, but what is it? Do you know what it means in like the real world? Is that signifying like inverted or upright if it's plus or minus? Jennifer, that would mean it's an upright image, right? She's on here. Yes. So the plus signifies that there's an upright. I believe so. Yes. And magnified by 1.5 times. Mm -hmm. And then the negative would mean it was inverted. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So that was a tough one. Obviously, that's where the double points came from. So solid work on guessing that one correctly. Um, yeah, keeping the sign straight makes a huge difference. But uh, taking a second just to draw it, draw a, oops, that just go, to draw it out can be helpful too. So okay, let's go back to Kahoot. Question number 11.
I really am a pretty nice person in real life, but this question does not make me a nice person. All right, three seconds left. All right. So let's see who got that one right. Okay, did anybody actually try to do the math on that one? I tried, but full disclosure didn't get done. <laughs> I just guessed what I thought might be about right. Nice. I hope that that's all that were, did anybody, I mean, were those all just guesses or did anybody have like some thought processes to what, how they came up with their answer? Let's see, Ariana, I think you got that one, right? How did you come up with that answer? All right. Well, like Jennifer, my calculations were starting, but then had to quickly click one before finishing. Um, I was starting to use uh like like a lens maker formula with the um uh like the power is proportional to the index of refractions but did not get far in writing everything down so how did you come up with the an educated guess on that um it was asking for corneal power which is close to 40 in a real eye so i went with the answer close to 40. Awesome. So let me, uh, is that kind of what everybody did? Was there any other clue that led you to, uh, to answer D for anybody? You could also use the thick lens equation. Okay. Let me just share this really quick. So you can actually come to this answer using all these equations. I would be crazy to try to do that when you only have a minute and seven seconds per question on average. Um, but basically the thing to pay attention to, if you get a question like this, there are good ways to make educated guesses on this. Like Ariana said, like a corneal power is close to 45, right? Um, but that's in air, okay? So the, the kind of key words, if there is such a thing as assume index of refraction of air equals one, and then gives you the cornea and the aqueous. Um, so if it's asking in air, it's gonna be probably pretty close to 45 because that's what the average cornea um, power is. But it could give you this in water, okay? It could say that somebody's opening their eyes underwater and that changes things drastically. So as kind of a rule of thumb, um, if it's in air, it will be close to 45 diopters. If it's in water, it will be close to minus a half diopter. Um, like the lens maker equation and stuff is, and, and the thick lens equation, both very useful. And, and frankly, I think, you know, you could calculate those out, but something like this, if you just, if you can just keep that in your mind, like, I mean, I use this in, contact lenses and in cornea all the times that a, the average cornea is around a 45. Um, so that's something that's good to have in mind clinically as well. Um, but if you just keep those two rules kind of in your, in the back of your head and then pay attention to if the index of refraction is in air versus water, that should be able to help quite a bit. So that was kind of a mean one. I didn't actually expect anybody to get that question right in 90 seconds, but um, do those rules make sense to people? Any questions or concerns with that? Okay. All right, let's keep going to the next Kahoot.
So kind of a split on that one. All right, so let's see. Dr. Petty, my team over here, we just clicked a little too fast. That was our bad. Sorry oh. about that. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, let's see. Cole, can you tell us what your answer was? Well, I was the one who got it wrong. <laughs> I, I changed the sign too early. Um, but basically, you add the plus sill to the sphere uh and then switch the sign as well as change the axis by 90 degrees so we did that we just did it incorrectly <laughs> got it all right so let's go here i would normally do a seventh inning stretch but we got to get through all these questions here so um yeah so to switch from plus sill to minus sill form exactly what you said you add the sill and sphere together. Just make sure you're paying attention to the signs. Flip the sign of the sill and then change the axis by 90 degrees. And we come up with B. Um, I'm curious, did anybody like mess up on that without just accidentally hitting um, the, the wrong button? I get, are, any questions on how to switch from plus sill to minus sill and vice versa? I think that's something that could easily show up and also very helpful in real life, um, you know, if you're switching back and forth between contacts and glasses. Nice job on that one. Um, okay, here's the next question. Okay, so a bit of a split again on that one. So let's see how we came up. Remind me who Prism is. I don't know who that one is. Ah, uh, that's me. Abigail? Um, okay, can you tell us how you came up with that answer? So um, I knew that um, each Prism diopter is equal to like half of the degrees when it's less than 45. So I picked the closest to, ten, uh, I think it's 20, right? So I picked the closest to 10. Exactly, yeah. So switch back. Okay. I think that was something that I mentioned on an earlier slide about prisms. Um, the exact number is 0.572 degrees times the amount of prism, or gives you 0.572 gives you the, the amount of degrees. Um, so it's, you know, it, it equals 11.44, but that's about 10. If you just, if, like I said, sorry, let me back up. Um, if it's less than 45, then it's about half of the amount of prism. Um, so that's a pretty good rule for a most prism, um, certainly that we're prescribing is gonna be much less than, than 45. Did anybody um, accidentally get that wrong or just not remember that rule of thumb? Looks like maybe there are a couple that may have got that. Just keep that in your head. Um, degrees, half the prism, as long as we're under 45. Okay, 
Oops. Um, next question is starting right now. So this is a telescope question now. Let's rock that one. Lydia, can you tell us how you came up with that answer? Um, so I, I'm not participating in the Kahoot chat, I have to be honest, because I was late because I was. Oh, late. I'm so sorry. But um, it is because it's the um, like the way the um, how should I explain it? The way the um, lenses are aligned. It's the Galean. And then okay. can, we back, can we go back to the numbers of the question, please? Sure. Let me pull up. Uh... And if you do want to hop in, hop on the, the pin and pattern are on the bottom if you want to hop on there at some point. But let me go back to the question. Okay. So here's the question here. Yep. Um... All right, so um, if you're subtracting the focal length of it um, from, the, from the two objective lenses, um, that will tell you that it's the Galilean lens. Um, and it, like you're, you're subtracting 10, like minus 10 plus four. <laughs> um, Here, let me put this up for you. Mm. so yeah so one thing to keep in mind as far as like galilean versus astronomical if they're two plus lenses you know it's astronomical which is going to be longer the focal length is going to be in between the two mm -hmm. if it's galilean then you're going to have a plus lens and a minus lens and i guess that's how you know that it's galilean plus objective and a minus ocular and then the focal point will be outside. So it's gonna be a shorter telescope. So one thing to keep in mind, if you're given like the powers to find a distance, you'll, you'll wanna take the inverse of the power to find the focal length of that. So one over four plus one over a minus 10. Um, you add those together. So 25 centimeters plus a minus 10 centimeters equals 15 centimeters. And yeah, so um, there are definitely some telescope equ equations up there, but if you can just keep that in, in your head, like somehow like astronomical is two plus, Galilean is a plus and a minus, and that the astronomical one is longer. If it's longer, that means that the focal point is in, inside or in between the two lenses. You'll be able to like, that will help you to answer a lot of the telescope questions, just knowing that. Like if we just look at here, we had a plus four and a minus 10. Okay, well, it's a plus and a minus. I know it's a Galilean, that eliminates C and D. Um, and then you can go ahead and, and plug in those powers. Um, you take the difference and it ends up with 15 centimeters. So. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome, yeah. Um, Anybody else have any questions on this one? I, I think this is something very typical of what you might end up seeing on OCAP. So keeping kind of those just general rules in your head would be helpful. So any other questions on this one? All right. Okay, here is the next one.
Okay. A little bit all over the place here. Telescope ones are tricky. Um, so I think, so let me, let me pull up my, uh, let's see who got it right. JCC, man, not the expense. Okay, so for angular magnification, oops, sir, where'd that just go? So the answer is C minus five X. This gets back into the question of the minus versus plus on magnification. What does that mean? Um, so the equation is for, for the telescope is magnification equals the negative power of the ocular over the power of the objective. The reason that the negative and the plus matters is that a negative magnification will give an inverted image. So it's still magnifying it. When you use an astronomical telescope, it's still magnifying and it will still give you a larger image, but it will be inverted. In other words, everything that you look at will be upside down. Is, is this a different formula than the formula that's like diopter of the eyepiece over diopter of the object of the uh, of the like objective, I guess, is equal to magnification? Let me scroll all the way back up. Oh, no, I think I may have confused ocular and objective or eyepiece or something. You may have just seen the answers in the next one. Um, yeah, so if you, I think in, in one of my lectures I did before, before we had the reverse classroom, um, I had some pictures of what the different telescopes looked like. And a, and a Galilean telescope, they, those will usually just be straight. Like if you think of what a pirate would look at, you know, look out on, on a ship or something like that, just like a, a straight telescope. Um, an astronomical telescope usually has a bend in it. They're not straight. So a lot of the telescopes that you'll see, like if somebody at a football game, it might have like a bend in it. That's because they have to have, um, they have to have mirrors in there to fix the image so it's not inverted when you look at it. So an astronomical telescope, these are just kind of some rules of thumb for an astronomical telescope. It'll be greater than four X. It'll have a plus power ocular or both lenses will be plus power and the magnification will be negative or, in, or inverted. Um, yeah, I was just looking at that equation for the magnification and it, it, the, the one that is on the handout that I gave to you guys. And it doesn't have that minus there for some reason. But I know when I was looking up this, this problem online, it definitely had that minus. So I'm gonna to have to look at that equation again. Jennifer, do you remember if the equation has a minus in it? It does. Um, the equation's minus the power of the eyepiece over the power of the objective. That's what I thought, but for some reason, the one that is on the paper, which I just, I got from the OCAP book, it, it's probably because the image they're talking about it's image distance and object distance. And the image is a minus because it's coming from the left, whereas the object is a plus if you're considering it in that way. There, there's yeah. a separate equation that's the telescope magnification equation. That's the second to last one that does seem to be wrong. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it should definitely have that minus in there. For the telescope mag equation because that's how you know that the astronomical has an inverted magnification so i will fix that on your equation sheet um 
let's put multiple stars on here. So. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, we only have two minutes. Let's do a few more questions if we can. Time flies when I'm having so much fun about this here. I thought I had fixed all the issues with last year's stuff. Okay, here's number 14B. Glad you guys are nailing right through here. So, okay, I think you guys all got that one right. Um, I'm just going to show you this page really quick. So, prism after one centimeter at one meter distance, we had half a meter. So, we need to double that um, object size to get our prism. Yeah, you guys all got that one right. Any questions on that one? Okay, we'll keep moving through to get through as many more of these as we can. Can you guys see the Kahoot again? Yeah, we can. Okay, perfect. So this is that same equation that we were just looking at, that m equals the power of the ocular over, or sorry, the minus power of the ocular over the power of the objective. So how were you able to tell astronomical versus Galilean? Jennifer. Um, we know it's astronomical because both powers are positive. All right. And then... See, Jordan, um, were you able to come up with, or how were you able to come up with the, uh, the magnification on that? It's just the um, telescope magnification equation. Um, so it's just the uh, negative power of the eyepiece over the objective power. Perfect. Great. All right. Yeah, so you guys did really well on that one. Okay. Tight race, two through four there, I like it. Okay, um, next question. We might get through all this.
Fantastic. All right. Um, let's see. I'm going to just bring up the PowerPoint. So here's oh, let's see. All right. So here's kind of the images here. Ariana, can you tell us how you got that answer? In the right eye. Uh, so first of all, we're looking below the. So we're interested in vertical. In the right eye, um, the sill um, is actually uh, acting at 180. So we can ignore the sill there. And then uh, we multiply one centimeter from the 10 millimeters times minus three and get minus three. And then in the left eye, um, the minus one and then the plus one that's acting vertically cancel out. So left eye um, is zero. And then the um, minus three, uh, like you drew there is, it's a uh, diverging lens. So it's a base down. So three base down on the right eye, and nothing in the left. Awesome. Yeah. Did anybody like draw the picture or do you kind of just do those in your head? I'm just curious what's most effective for you guys because everybody got that right. Did anybody draw a picture? I draw a quick picture, just two quick, quick picture. And left and then the quick triangles. Yeah, I draw yeah. two. May I ask a question just to see if I understand this correctly? Sure. Um, I, uh, if the patient was not looking 10 millimeters below the optical center, but 10 millimeters above the optical center, the only thing that would change is that it would not be a base down, but it would be a three diopter base up. Correct. correct. Okay. Yes, and that's where drawing the picture is helpful to see which direction the prism base is going. And so drawing these little question, or excuse me, these little triangles um, will show which direction the prism is. Now, Ariana did a great job saying, okay, they, you know, they're looking one centimeter below. So we know that we only have to worry about the vertical. If this is saying that they're looking 10 millimeters to the right, then we'd be worrying about these horizontal numbers, okay, which could end up being different. Um, and in this case would end up being a different answer. So just pay attention to how far and which direction the patient is looking. All the ones that I've shown here have been vertical and looking down, but they could technically ask any direction and, and uh, amount. I would hope that they would do 10 millimeters or one centimeter or two centimeters, something to keep it simple for you. Um, but they could do you know half a centimeter or something that would, you just have to plug that into your, your equation here. Yeah, great question on that though. If they were looking up, it would end up being base up prism. Any other questions on this? Okay, I think we have time for our last question. To the, oh. to the right or to the left. I don't think I would get to that answer. So how would the equation differ if this patient would look 10 millimeters to the right? Like how would we describe that with the basis? It would be, if it's looking to the, like it would be the base out, but how would the prism diopters be? Good but, question. So, so let's say that the patient was looking to the right, okay? So that now we, we have to like think about the patient's perspective. So that would actually move what we're looking at over to the left on this. Can you guys see my cursor there? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so, in this case, 10 centimeters, we would multiply that by the minus two. So two, minus two times one centimeter, we would have two prism diopters from this lens. We would have one prism diopter from this lens because minus one um, times one centimeter gives us one. And in this case, it'd be still be a base out. If you drew the picture, you'd have triangles like this. Hopefully you can kind of tell what I'm doing with my cursor there. Um, but it would be base out in both cases. And then we just take the difference, a two prism diopter minus one prism diopter means that they would have one prism diopter base out 
in the right eye induced by that lens system. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, great question. Um, let's do our last one really quick. Um, the great double points. Really just want to hash these ones. This is apparently a pretty heavy one. Oh no. Uh oh, can you guys see it so? All right, can you guys still see the Kahoot on there? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right. Looks like most of you got that. So C, C could be either or, or I guess it was C or D. So which one did you guys come up with? C. C, great. Um, Let's see. Ali, could you just walk us through this one really quick? Sorry, I missed the beginning of the question. So I was still doing oh. my math, but it, it's similar. Oh, yeah. But the thing is that you have to um, flip it to, because you gave it to us in negative. So, right? Correct. Yeah. So you have to flip that. And then it's similar to what we did before. So, in making your power crosses. So it'd be like the right eye I had minus three at the 90 and minus four at 180. The left was minus seven at 90 and minus six at 180. And you'd use minus three and minus seven to do the multiplication with the 10 millimeters below. I think I can't see the problem. Just yes. the <laughs> no, you you got it totally right. So um how it could make Okay, so you're exactly right. So you put it on a power cross. Now you had mentioned, you know, putting this in plus sill form first. You don't necessarily have to do that. Um, I know that mm -hmm. that's kind of how we think in ophthalmology. <laughs> My brain does not function. Yeah. So so it's completely fine to do that. But on a you know putting it on a power cross like this, like you just put the first number at whatever axis this uh, this tells you. So minus three at ninety, and then you just um, add these two together and put it 90 degrees apart. So you could just go straight to the power cross. At the same time, you know, like if you're more comfortable working in plus sill, just put that in plus sill really quick and then put it on there. But you could technically save yourself a step there. But absolutely, you did the rest right. We have a minus seven in the vertical on the left eye, minus three vertical on the right. Um, take the difference or, you know, add those together basically, and you get minus 
or diopters were 10 millimeters below. So that would be one centimeter. So we have four face down in the left eye. Great job. Any questions on that one? Okay. Go back to our Kahoot here. Let's see who took the podium here. The Keplerian King. Who's the Keplerian King? I don't even know who that was. That was Cole, me. Cole, nice. Okay. Well done, you guys. Um, yeah, optics, there is a ton of potential things to cover. If you watch those videos, I hope you paid attention. He, he kind of has like the top 10 list of hot ticket items on the test of high yield material. And I think in his lectures, he does a really good job covering those top 10s and, and a few other things as well. Um, I tried to gear you know, this towards most of those top 10 items and a few other things mixed in. Um, but I know we're kind of out of time. Does anybody have any questions just in the last couple minutes here um, before we end? Okay. Thanks, Dr. Petty. Hey, you guys are so welcome.